Hello everyone, thank you for stopping by to watch another episode here at All I See Is W. Today, I wanted to create this video to share with you my insights on a biotechnology company that is destined to take off very soon. The company name is Sky Bioscience by the ticker SKYE, formerly known as Emerald Bioscience, EMBI. The company had announced rebranding it of itself last Friday and come... Tuesday after Martin Luther King holiday, EMBI will automatically switch to SKYE. So let's hold on tight, existing investors. And if you are a new investor considering investing in a company such as Sky Bioscience, I will share with you reasons why and how this company is going to position itself for success in terms of bioengineering cannabinoids for pharmaceutical potential. Let's get started. Now, first off, I just wanted to reiterate that the slides I'll be sharing with you actually came from the actual company where the CEO, Mr. Pundit Dillon, had presented the slide deck to shareholders conference several weeks ago. So this disclaimer, I'm just going to go ahead and skip through this slide here and just focus on the main key points. And this company is trying to develop differentiated proprietary cannabinoid derivatives to treat glaucoma and other diseases with significant unmet medical needs. Now, in terms of its product innovation, this is a bioengineered synthetic cannabinoid derivative designed to significantly enhance therapeutic benefits. From a financial standpoint, we know that in the realm of glaucoma, this is a potential greater than 6.6% billion dollar market opportunity with a great product there will be market share that sky bioscience can take on compared to all of the traditional drug products and i'll go through all of that information with you in terms of intellectual property we know that there's broad composition of matter patent protection with the drug products that sky bioscience is currently working on and with the leadership as well as the team that's running the company at this time, we know that there's a track record of rapidly advancing preclinical candidates through to human trials and it's securing strategic pharma partnerships. So for example, Mr. Punit Dillon, when he was at Oncosec, he worked with Merck and was able to uplist the company from OTC into the NASDAQ market through the collaboration with Merck and building on $200 million through multiple financing. So I'm very confident that the team at Sky Bioscience knows what they're doing at this time. In terms of milestones for the company, we know that preclinical data of its drug product is expected to be released sometime in Q2 of this year, as well as an expectation of getting its drug product tested on human clinical trials come the second half of the year. So that's looking very exciting with where this company is headed in terms of its planning, future potential breakthrough with its product innovation and just having an experienced team as well as a CEO who can lead and inspire the, the team here at Sky Bioscience. Now, next up, just wanted to share with you the actual disease that Sky Bioscience is, is working towards. I mean, this is the main purpose, right? To advance clinical unmet needs for patients dealing with glaucoma. In fact, glaucoma is the leading cause of irreversible blindness. So once you get blind, there's really no way to reverse that disease state. And gl glaucoma is a disease that leads to the progressive damage of the retinal ganglion cells, which make up the optic nerve. And I'll show you the optic nerve in the later slides without intervention will gradually lead to irreversible blindness. So as you can see the picture on the left, this is where you have good vision here. Over here in this middle picture, this is a sign of early glaucoma where you can't really see clearly. Now with advanced glaucoma, this is where you can pretty much consider yourself blind where you're unable to discern what you're looking at with objects passing by your periphery system. So this is basically the purpose to what Sky Bioscience is working towards here. Now, in terms of just patient population, we know that the current glaucoma patients at this time is at around 78 million people being infected with this disease. Come 2040, we know that 
the total amount of glaucoma patients will reach up to about 100 million patients. So there's no actual cure at this time. However, there's treatments in place on slowing disease progression, such as companies like Bosch and Lom, Merck, and Pfizer, where they do have traditional IOP lowering drug products. But the question is, can it provide other additional benefits for patients that don't have IOP problems, but have early signs of glaucoma potential. Now, how does glaucoma cause blindness, right? Well, we know that a common trait of glaucoma involves increased pressure in the eye. So that's called intraocular pressure. So we want lower intraocular pressure or lower IOP for the slowing down of the disease state. However, when you have consistently increased IOP, that's where you can have damage to your optic nerve, which is at the posterior end of your eye. And that can cause increased glaucoma leading to blindness. And we don't want that in patients, right? Now, this is a picture over on the left, a healthy state of the eye where there is normal production and drainage of the aqueous humor fluid. It's well balanced and you don't have the optic nerve being damaged. Now, over to the center picture, we see that there's drainage canal becoming blocked, there's fluid buildup, and that can lead to increased pressure. You can think of it as like plaques and tangles in your arteries where there's like clots potential. Now it's a similar concept and when that happens then this can lead to a disease state of glaucoma where you have increased pressure damage to the optic nerve cells and that can ultimately result in the vision loss. Now heading over to the next slide here, so these are the current therapies that are in place at this time and we know that glaucoma drugs represent a billion dollar global market and it's continually growing with the increased demand of glaucoma patients needing IOP lowering drug effects. And with the aging population and it's expected to reach about 11 billion by 2027. Now. There are current drugs to lower IOP in order to slow the disease progression. However, there isn't an effective cure or any type of drug product intended to provide neural protection. And if and when the first drug product out in the field is able to demonstrate neural protection, then that means there will be a significant breakthrough in just unlocking the future potential for transforming how glaucoma is treated. Now, many patients in fact, are non-responders and have poor responses or develop tolerance to these actual traditional drug class medications. And let's say when you combine these traditional drugs with two or more drugs, it can lead to significant side effects and we don't want that. And lack of innovation calls for new class of therapy, which is why Sky Bioscience has developed a synthetic bioengineered product with the addition of amino acids to not only reduce IOP but also potentially provide neural protection and that is going to be the game changer. So here as you can see with this generic name Latanoprost, I mean there's a good percentage here compared to the other drug products in terms of reducing IOP. This drug product actually comes from Pfizer as you can see and that's competing against a large-scale company. So if and when this hidden gem biotech company can demonstrate that its drug product can demonstrate higher percentage of reducing IOP, then that's going to have the share price jump up and catapult upward vertically from my perspective. Here with the next drug product, Timolol, I mean, although the IOP reduction percentage is much lower than the top drug, this drug is actually made by Merck, and we know that Merck is a large-scale pharmaceutical company that most customers rely on, right? However, I mean, the fact that it's lower than Latanoprost and it's made by Pfizer, we know that Sky Bioscience is a big-time competitor to these large-scale companies. And also with other drug products such as Latanoprostine, Latanoprost, you know, there's other companies like Bosch and Mom in the ocular sector where they're making these drug products as well. So 
we know that the current therapies leave notable unmet needs in that there is just so much more potential for a company like Sky Bioscience to unlock the potential for really transforming how we treat glaucoma patients with increased IOP as well as potentially providing neuroprotection. Of all these drug products, zero products have a claim for intended use of providing neuroprotection because one third of glaucoma patients actually don't exhibit IOP problems. However, they are considered glaucoma patients. So once there's a drug product that can demonstrate neuroprotection, that will be the game changer and that'll open up a new billion dollar sector. And that's why I feel like Sky Bioscience can be the first one to do that. Now, next up, in terms of relevance of THC to glaucoma, we know that there are innate cannabinoid receptors throughout our body, right? I mean, how it was designed, how we got the THC CBD receptors in our body, that's the billion dollar question. We don't know, but it's there and it's available. So we know that these receptors are in place throughout our body and it plays an important role in managing many vital body signs. And our eye is actually containing a significant amount of cannabinoid receptors specifically in tissues involved in managing fluid production and drainage as well as cells responsible for vision. Now we know that THC and CB1 receptor have been shown to be involved in IOP lowering activity and I'll show you in the later slides actual articles that demonstrate that. Now the first report actually showed that smoking cannabis did in fact lower intraocular pressure back in like 1971. So this is a known clinical benefit with just the use of cannabinoids. Now, multiple human studies have since validated IOP reducing effects of THC and we'll get into more of that in the next slides here. As you can see here, table one, we see that there are multiple independent studies that have shown THC's capability to reduce intraocular pressure. So with the subject group here, we see that smoking the marijuana actually had an IOP decrease. With 10 healthy volunteers, we see IOP decrease. With 256 patients, we see IOP reduction. So with other patients, as well as 32 patients of glaucoma, we see IOP reduction. So there's a number of actual studies that do prove that with the use of THC it has shown to reduce the ability to lower IOP through the use of smoking the marijuana, right? Now, let's get more into the details now. With the challenges to THC as an effective treatment of glaucoma, with systemic delivery, it requires relatively high dose to achieve therapeutic effect in the eye. And there's variable pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics, there's poor oral bioavailability when ingested. So that's not going to be the mode of delivery that Sky Bioscience is focused on. And there's limited duration of effect when inhaled in smoking uh, cannabis. That's why Sky Bioscience realizes that the mode of delivery into the eye is going to be the game changer for not only providing a safe mechanism, but also providing an efficacy perspective for getting the drug product hydrophilic so that it can bind into the optic nerve with all the receptors for THC in place there. Now with local delivery, THC is lipophilic, so it's challenging to deliver into and penetrate aqueous tissue. And what we know is that oil and water don't mix. Now with the bioengineered product that Sky Bioscience is working on, it makes it hydrophilic where it can bind into the backside of your eye into the receptors with the key locking onto the receptor. Now with the next slide here, as you can see, this is how the THC is bioengineered from THC to THC VHS. VHS is basically just addition of valine hemisuccinate amino acids to enhance aqueous solubility and surface polarity characteristics, which does enable 
improve local delivery into the eye and avoiding systemic effects, which we saw in the prior slide. Now, once inside the eye, THC VHS is converted back into THC by enzymes that cleave VHS arm of the molecule. Now, VHS THC is a proprietary molecule with compositions of matter patents providing intellectual property protection that is instrumental to value creation. And we know that with this intended use, let's say if and when Sky Bioscience submits its drug product to the health authority, this company will gain exclusive rights because it's not relying on any other competitors, similar design construct. This is a brand new construct and this is why I feel this is going to be a game changer and you won't likely have copycats that can develop a similar intended use because this company will have market exclusivity where you can market your product for many years before another company can start copycatting your drug product. So that's going to be a big benefit for Sky Bioscience as well and I just wanted to point that out. Now on the next slide here we see that THC VHS actually lowers IOP better than both market leaders. So as you can see Latanoprost and Timolol, these are like the large scale companies that produce these drug products. Over on the right here, I mean, this was all tested on rabbit models, right? And as you can see, the dark red line is characteristic of Sky Biosciences product, while the green and the teal are competitor products. Now, the lower line would indicate that it has a reduction in intraocular pressure, which is a good thing. And here we see access of time. Now, the great benefit is that at 240 minutes, we see IOP at like 14 mmHg, while you see Latanoprost at 16, while you have Timolol at like 18. And that's not going to provide efficacy to patients, right? With the use of THC VHS, it has brought down the IOP significantly, even towards the end of the trial run, right? At the end of 480 minutes, we see that THC VHS is still lower than all of the other competitors and that's going to be the game changer because let's say when the Q2 results demonstrate that this data remains consistent that's when institutions and existing shareholders will gain significant trust and respect in companies like Sky Bioscience and we know that there's potential for once daily dosing which is a good thing and there's Additional head-to-head -head studies against in combination with Ropressa and Latanapro's plan for Q2 of this year to further assess validate IOP lowering properties as what I just mentioned. So that's going to be very exciting come uh, Q2 once we continue to see more data from the preclinical trials. Next up I wanted to share with you is a slide where there's multifactorial mechanism of action in the eye and we're looking at a 3D model of human trabecular meshwork tissues and it's shown that THC has significantly lowered pressure and increased drainage in both healthy and disease simulated tissue. Now we know that THC treatment significantly reduced markers associated with fibrosis as you can see over here on the left. I mean with the healthy sign we see fibronectin we don't even see much of the redness here however with the disease state we do see fibronectin than being very red here, although it's been treated with THC at 0 0.1, 0 0.5, and 2 micrograms. Now, the data does suggest IOP lowering capability of THC may be multifactorial, including vasodilatory, anti-inflammatory, and anti-fibrotic response, which is a good thing. So it doesn't just provide clinical benefit for reducing intraocular pressure as well as neural protection but it also provides multifactorial characteristics to add value to patients with eye disease. Now this is potentially a new class of glaucoma treatment with therapeutic attributes distinct from existing IOP lowering drugs meaning all of the traditional drugs that are currently in the market right now where Sky Boston Sciences product can add significant value. Now next up with this slide, not all glaucoma patients have elevated IOP, right? 
there's actually a large portion of glaucoma patients that present with normal IOP where it doesn't really need a drug product with a high efficacy of reducing IOP. However, the concern is that there can be damage to the optic nerve and vision loss, and there's no indication of what ultimately causes neural degeneration of the optic nerve in these patients. And a disproportionate number of patients have normal IOP levels in the Asian countries. So let's say if and when Sky Bioscience is able to demonstrate neuroprotection from its Q1 experiment, expecting to re release that data in Q2, then that means shareholders will buy into this company and there will be an increased demand, especially in the Asian markets where neuroprotection is in high demand. And it's estimated that greater than a third of all glaucoma patients globally have normal IOP. So once this company can demonstrate that it not only provides reducing IOP, but also neuroprotection, then this will be the game changer. And there is significant unmet need and tremendous market opportunity for a neuroprotective drug, as what's noted here in the slide. Now, as you can see here, there's cannabinoid-mediated signaling demonstrating neuroprotection. So there's multiple studies in different animals, including models of glaucoma, where it has demonstrated the ability of cannabinoids to promote health and survival of optic cell nerves. As you can see here with the use of THC, there's neuroprotective effect versus vehicle, and there's the treatment versus control, where there was a 20 to 40% increase of neuroprotective effect that's a very good sign. Now here, there's optic nerve injury model in rats planned in Q2 to validate neuroprotection properties of THC VHS. And that's going to be very exciting once we hear about this experiment with the data being released in Q2 of 2021. Now, let's look at this timeline where Sky Bioscience is positioned for value creation. What we know is Q1 of 2021, there's going to be preclinical optic nerve injury study to validate neuroprotection. Q2 2021, there's going to be investigational new drug enabling GLP repeat dose toxicity data available. As well as in Q2 2021, there's going to be head to head comparison of preclinical study with Propressa and Latanoprost. Where in Q3 of 2021, this is going to be the laser sharp focus of the company where it will begin its first human trial in Australia. And why is it done in Australia? Well, there's significant financial benefits when you do clinical trials in Australia. And given that Sky Bioscience is a small cap company, this is actually saving on money, which is a good thing. And when you look at the company's finances, right, the current ratio is about a three to four, which means that it has liquidity in place and doesn't really have to tap into its finances to pay off and compromise its uh, cash flow. Now, in Q1 of 2022, there will be clinical trial data, and the first human trial will be fast, low cost, and it'll include assessment of intraocular pressure, which is very exciting come the, the following year. Now, what's so unique about Sky Bioscience EMBI? Well, this company is definitely in a unique competitive position where Sky Bioscience has shown greater IOP lowering than the market leading glaucoma therapeutics going against the large scale companies. This company can provide potential neuroprotection capabilities and that will be a game changer unlocking so much pharmaceutical potential in the ocular space. And we know that there's going to be key preclinical data of IOP neuroprotection by Q2 of 2021. We know that the first clinical trial is going to be fast, low cost, and it will include assessment of IOP. And there's many glaucoma licensing deals that have been completed in phase two or earlier, which is telling us that clinical trials will have a very fast cycle time with the evaluation of safety and efficacy of Sky Biosciences product line. Now, in terms of capitalization, we know that this is the amount of common shares outstanding, 288 million. We know that the market cap is about 10.5 million, and the base of operations of Sky Bioscience is in 
San Diego, California. Now, in terms of management, we know that Punit Dillon is the current chief executive officer. He actually co-founded and led Oncosec, a cancer immunotherapy company focusing on melanoma, where he worked with Merck, as what I previously mentioned, and raised over $200 million. In fact, Punit was actually the VP of finance of in operations at Innovio Pharmaceuticals, where he additionally helped raise more than $160 million for that company. And Tom Kim actually did come from Innovio Pharmaceuticals as well. And with 2DIP, previously worked at Oncosec with Punit Dillon. So that's a good sign, just knowing that this team has been working together for many years. And we know that Roderick Cole, the head of R&D has significant experience over 25 years in research and development, including at Pfizer and AstraZeneca, where he's worked on a wide array of different diseases. So I'm very confident with the team here at Sky Bioscience, and I'm looking forward to how Punit Dillon is going to catapult this company vertically up from a share price standpoint. And in terms of scientific advisors and board of directors, we know that there's reputable scientists on board so for example we know that robert rich is one of the most reputable scientists out in this whole field of glaucoma space and he has been supporting the design of the drug product and with jeffrey goldberg who actually is a professor and chair of ophthalmology and director of spencer Center for Vision Research at Byers Eye Institute, Stanford University. This is another reputable person that can add value to the development of this drug product. Mr. Pasquale is a very known professor in ophthalmology at Mount Sinai, and he also provides value in, in this market space. And we know that Eduardo Munoz is an expert in cannabinoid research in endocannabinoids, which is why, you know, bridging the gap between cannabinoids and science and bioengineering that is all coming from, you know, very smart people from the scientific advisory board, as well as the team at Sky Bioscience. And with the, the current executive leadership, with Punit Dilling leading the company forward, I have high confidence based on his history of uplisting companies. So for example, at Oncosec, he was able to uplist the company from OTC into the NASDAQ market and actually mature the company with respect to time. So I'm confident with the CEO in place to move this company forward. Now overall, this is the end of the slide and let's say if you ever have any questions or comments, you know, you can always reach out to corporate development and investor relations, Karan Takar. I've actually spoken to the team at Sky Bioscience because I value their product and I like knowing more about what they do. And that's why I know what I know about the company. And I just wanted to share back with the community here on YouTube so that I can add value and just share with you why I'm so bullish with companies like sky bioscience so if you enjoyed this video please make sure to hit the like and subscribe with the bell notification turned on and i would really appreciate that you share this content to your network as well if you found that this video is valuable but i just wanted to share with you why i feel that this company will gain so much value from an investment standpoint and overall, just wanted to say thank you for watching another episode here at All I See Is W. Thank you all.